these two apples, wait, these two are yeah. inside of the 180 or these two? Yeah, cross. Okay. All right. Okay, um, yesterday we did a, a problem on this one where, um, geez, is it showing up? I was going to say, that was weird. Ooh, let's watch Thor Ragnarok. Oh, no. I actually own that's that good. movie. Let's deal with this one. Spoiler it's alert for everybody. It's no, 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 stop. Who has seen Infinity stop. War. All right. Okay, um, yesterday we talked about what a polygon is. Uh, polygons uh, have many angles. They're, uh, they're made from straight line segments. You can connect them to endpoints. They can't cross over each other. They're, they can't be in straight lines. We had vertices and edges, right? We talked about that yesterday. We talked about convex versus concave. What are the main difference between convex and concave? What do you remember about the pictures? What was a concave picture? I can't tell. What, what did a concave have? I'll draw two different pictures. I want to know which one's a concave. So let me draw the two pictures. Here we go. Here's the first one. That one. Here's the here. second one. Oh, no. Okay. That which one, one is concave? That, the one. bottom one is concave. Concave. All right. Why? Like that's conca. Why is it concave? Um, because there's like a little. The one that yeah. in. It has a little dent. Has a cap. Yeah. It's a volatile nest. It's a what? What? If you don't have the following add on for some light. All right. Oh, yeah. You're past it, everyone. All right. So, okay. <laughs> Um, but yes, that this bottom one is concave, the top one is convex. Concave has cavities, has little dents in it, right? We talked about that yesterday. We talked about the different names of polygons yesterday. We talked about um, triangles, we talked about quads, we talked about pentagons, hexagons are six, heptagons are seven, octagons are eight, that's the stop sign. Nine-gon or nonagon, we talked about decagons, elevengons, and dodecagons. Then what we did yesterday, those are all the different names, we went into and we talked about the triangles, okay? The different types of triangles, which um, they had, you know, six, seven different words we could talk about. Okay, for triangles, you can call them by their I side lengths or by their angles. I know right? one of the action names. Okay, what are what are one of the names? Scaling. Scaling. Okay, that's the first one, right? Scaling means all three walls are different. Isosceles. Isosceles. Two walls are the same. And equilateral. Equilateral. All three walls are the same. Pretty good. By its angles, right? A cube which means all angles are less than 90. Obtuse. Obtuse and right, right, where you have one right angle. Okay. There was one other word that I didn't have here. Um, I didn't have it because it wasn't a word that we've talked about a lot, uh, that it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't come up until you're in geometry. Um, it was the word equiangular. You can have an equiangular triangle. That just means all the angles are the same. Okay. All these angles are the same. Okay, now, if you have a picture that's equilateral, fine, just angles match. If you had a if you had a picture that was equilateral, that means all the walls match, right? That was the picture I had in the last slide. Okay, all the walls match. If you mix both definitions together and you put them all in the same picture, where it's equilateral and equiangular then it's called a regular picture. I know that seems weird. The word regular means everything's the same. Everything, walls and angles, those are special. So in fact, an equilateral equiangular triangle is called a regular triangle. It's where everything matches. Everything else on this picture, everything up here is irregular um, because all the walls are different. If they're all matching, then they're all the same. So they're regular. Does that make sense, like those vocab words? Yes. I didn't talk about that yesterday. I know that's a goofy word. We just didn't get to see it. Uh, we did the activity we did yesterday. You guys had to take a triangle and give it two names. Talk about that one. Okay. Today we're going to talk about a different property, but this will be at the very end today. I want to talk about some basic stuff about these shapes. And then to remember, tomorrow we're going to start measuring all that good stuff. Um, you still need to hold on to that compass, or not the compass, uh, the protractor, where you can measure angles. You'll have to be able to do that for the semester test. Keep that in mind. I'll ask you to measure angles. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. New stuff today. Let's let's go into quads. You need your notes out, please. Uh, so okay. I have your notes out. We got to talk about our quads today. Quad feed. Not the legs. We're talking about the actual quadrilaterals. Uh -huh. 
I, I was talking about the games, gaming uh, reference. Let's see, I think I finally... Oh, Aha, uh -huh, it works. Alright. Okay, what we're going to is the quadrilaterals. Four-sided figures. Okay, quad means four, right? Quad ATV has four wheels. Quad means four. That's random. Now, here's the problem. Any four-sided figure is called a quad. If you move to a very specific type, then it could be a special category of it, okay? All right, so if it's four-sided or four vertices, that's just a quad. The problem is there's two special categories to quads. There's actually a third, uh, but the two main ones are, are parallelograms and trapezoids. There is a third one, which is called the kite. I'll show you the difference between kites today. Um, that's kind of the third category that we'll talk about. Okay, but that won't be until later. All right, questions on the different types. All right, let's go into these. Let's go to the specific names, right? Anything with four sides is a quad, quadrilateral. Okay, all right, let's go to the, uh, let's go to the parallelogram. Parallelograms for us, but, um, the picture I always have in my head, it looks like a pink pearly eraser. In fact, the, the quad that I have, the parallelogram, is this shadowed edge. This is the picture I'm thinking of. Kind of looks like a rectangle, but it's bent. It's like stepped on. Okay, that's, that's a parallelogram, that outlined shape that I just gave you. Okay, the definition of a parallelogram, every wall is parallel. Now, what do we talk about the word parallel? What do we know about parallel lines? We talked about this last week. I think Mrs. Edwards was in the room at the time. What are parallel lines? Yeah, hold up your hands. Do the motion. Railroad tracks, right? They, they won't touch. You know, I think the example we used in class was the lines on the floor are parallel. If you ch if you change perspectives, it kind of looks like they're going towards each other. Um, but it's lines that do not touch, right? Do not intersect. So on this picture, the opposite walls, if you were to extend them, they won't touch, and the top and bottom extend them won't touch. I got a few done. All right. We'll wrap it up tomorrow. Yeah. I think we have a full day tomorrow, so no worries. Though. Okay. All right. Um, why, do we not have a full day today? No, we have full days. Last, every Wednesday up until tomorrow, they're always early out, so we'll have short classes. I thought we were supposed to have so, nine early outs on Wednesdays yesterday. Last week we did. The rest of the time, they're all full days now. So what, just like today, they're all normal now. So there's nothing changed. Every day will be normal from here on out. Okay, so trapezoids. Um, trapezoids is one, so to me it looks like a skateboard ramp. Kind of looks like a skateboard ramp if you're coming up on it. Um, the idea is that the top and bottom are parallel lines. Okay? So one pair of parallel lines. Um, to me it also looks like a, uh, a door wedge. I know they used to use these back in the door to hold doors open. They used to yep. like, make a block of wood. Um, it also mimics a razor blade for like when you shave. Um, razors are in this shape when they come out of the pressing machine. So the blade is, uh, the, more, the more steep the angle here, uh, the duller it is. So you want to have a blade that's really long and skinny. That's why razor blades are really skinny. Uh, makes the angle really short and shallow. And um, it's easier to, um, to groom, groom yourself with. Right? Uh, but again, it's a trapezoid in shape. It's got one pair of sides that are parallel. Okay, questions, comments about the parallel?